Hello, my friends, and welcome back to this channel. If you are on Facebook, welcome back to my page. I'm going to deliver to you again a powerful preaching that speaks about one of my favorite subjects in the whole world, and that is sexual purity. Sexual purity is one of my favorite subjects, indeed. Why is that? I'm going to tell you something. For all of us that come from this world, we experience darkness, friends. We experience heavy darkness. We were crushed by this darkness. We live in darkness. We were one of the children of the darkness. We were there. We stare the father of darkness in the eyes. We experience what this world has to offer. And we said, no. We came to Christ broken and we said, we want light. And now we want to lose ourselves in light. So you understand why this passion about purity? Why this passion about sexual purity? On well, beautiful music of Sokolov Brothers, there are some uh, Russian Christian singers. I try to put the music as low as I can. I don't want the copyright uh, to kick in. <laughs> but the music is so beautiful and so inspirational. It deserves a chance. <laughs> Let me talk to you about sexual purity. I want you to hear it. I want you to see once again why it's so important. Why it's so important. Let's uh, raise our hands to God and say, Lord, we're here. We want to live a holy life, Lord. We're passionate about you, Lord. We want to be even more passionate about what you have to offer to us. And that is a, a life lived in holiness, a life in which purity is not middle name. No matter what uh, your name is, my friend, allow the middle name that you have to be purity. Thank you, Lord. We thank you and we hear and we want you to teach us. Touch our lives. Change us, Lord. We cannot be the same. We cannot be the same. A true genuine change is when we have lives that are changed when we live differently than what we used to be when we talk differently than what we used to talk when we embrace purity and we make it a rule of our life praise you now and forever thank you jesus amen god wants us to live in purity now it doesn't matter your past my friend my brother my sister it doesn't matter what you've done in your past it doesn't matter that you must stop there in your past. All of us we did. Then the devil wants us uh, to believe this lie. We already messed up. We already throw our innocence to the garbage. We already done this. The devil comes and says, too late for you. Too late. Behind us, the, you say it, and behind us, devil, because it's not too late. Through Christ, we have a clean slate. Through Christ, we have a new chance and we will proclaim the truth and nothing will stop us from doing what we have to do, to be vocal about it. It doesn't matter if some will get offended. It doesn't matter if uh, some uh, sensitive uh, <laughs> feelings will be trampled under the feet. It doesn't matter. We will proclaim holiness. We will proclaim sexual purity. Why we will proclaim sexual purity? Well, Allow me to go deeper into it. And you know, my friend, that God <clears throat> gave man and woman the joy and pleasure of sexual relationships, but within the bonds of marriage. And the Bible is very clear about the importance of maintaining this sexual purity that I'm talking about. Within the boundaries of that union, between man and wife. Open in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, and you're going to see that how important it is a uh, marriage bed to be kept clean. Now, us uh, as human beings, we are well aware of uh, the pleasing effect of this gift from God, but have uh, sadly expanded it. Humanity has expanded this well beyond marriage into virtually any circumstance. The world has this philosophy 
if it feels good, uh, do it. And it's a part of many cultures, especially Americans, English, all these Western cultures. And it's so prevalent to the point where sexual purity is seen as uh, unnecessary, a reason to be mocked, to be laughed at. Everybody will laugh at you. I have experience of uh, many teenagers that they outreach to me and they told me that uh, they will not speak about the fact that they are virgins because they are ashamed. They are mocked if they keep their sexual purity. Yet, uh, regardless of them mocking you, mocking me, God puts a lot of attention, a lot of emphasizes on sexual purity. Let me read it, the word of God. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5 and verse 7. You should be sanctified, that uh, you should avoid sexual immorality. Each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Not in passion at the last, just like the heathen who do not know God. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. That's uh, verse 7 emphasizes. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Look. Over here, God outlines his reasons for uh, sexual purity in the lives of his children. Let's analyze this verse. We are sanctified. We are sanctified to the blood of Jesus. And for that reason, we are to avoid sexual immorality. There is a, let's go deep down, shall we? Let's go into Greek, koine. And let's see what the word sanctified means. The word sanctified means purified, made holy, consecrated unto God. Again, this word in Greek, sanctified, English, it's very poor in uh, describing what this word really means. It means purified, made holy, consecrated unto God. As Christians, uh, you are a Christian? Are you a Christian? Tell me. I want to hear it. Yes? Okay. If you are a Christian, we, you, and me, we, we are lived to live. We are called. <laughs> we are on this life to live. I said, we are lived to live. We are called to live. We are alive to live. A purified life because we have been made holy by the exchange of our sin for the righteousness of Christ on the cross and have been made completely new creations in Christ. Completely new creation, my friend. Our old nature with all that impurity, sexual and uh, any other kind of impurity, have died. And now the life we live, we live by faith in the one who died for us. Just like Galatians uh, chapter 2 verse 20 says, now we will live our life through Christ because he was the one that died for us. To continue in a fornication, all kind of sexual impurity, is to deny that uh, Christ did this for us. To live in sexual impurity is to deny that, and uh, doing so, in fact, a legitimate reason to question whether we have ever truly been born again. Without sanctification, you cannot say, I cannot say that I am truly born again. Sanctification, my friend, is the process by which me, you, all of us, we become more and more like Jesus. Is that essential evidence of reality in our life of Christ being there? Is the reality of our salvation. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5, we see the necessity of controlling our body. When we give in to sexual immorality, we give evidence that the Holy Spirit is not in us. Because we do not possess one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is self-control. All believers display the fruit of the Spirit. 
Remember Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. All those fruits of the Holy Spirit and uh, self-control is related to sexual purity, my friend, between others. Self-control and sexual purity, they go hand in hand. They are the best friends, believe me. And um, we need to honor God. And now we know that His rules are there for our good. God uh, will not want us to live lives uh, that uh, will end in uh, us being self-destroyed. Now the opposite of sexual purity is a life lived in fornication, in debauchery. To embrace what your heart wants. To listen uh, to what this world is whispering to you in your ear. They say, live your better life now. Do whatever makes you happy. Be your true self. And you see, what does it mean to be uh, so-called your true self? Our self, this self that we have inside of us, is calling us to rebel against God. But when you are born again, when you allow Christ to be a reality in your life every day, that sinful self diminished. Let's put that sinful self there on the hospital bed. Have this image in your mind so you understand. Someone heavily ill, uh, connected to all kinds of uh, gadgets in the hospital. Uh, that's how your sinful self and my sinful self needs to be. In the ER, in the emergency room. Not dying because sadly we will not die. As long as we are in this imperfect body, our sinful self will still be there. But at least let's put that sinful self on a hospital bed. <laughs> let's not allow the sinful self to run freely doing it, its own will. Let's allow Christ to be in us everything. And every day will be more like Christ and less like us. Let's live lives in sexual purity, my friends. God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you feel that passion that is inside of me. A passion that comes from a previous life. But I lived in darkness. I tasted darkness. I know it doesn't mean to live in darkness. And now I want light. I want the light to embrace me and to lose myself in light. Let's do this together, shall we? God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for listening. See you soon.